Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how we can use REST APIs to get data from the internet and bring that into our game or application that we're creating with Unity. So in today's example, I've created this little scene and we can click on random Pokemon and you'll see that it begins to load a random Pokemon off the internet. And this is using a free and public API called Poke API. Again, we can just click random Pokemon and you'll see that it comes up with the Pokemon's name, number, the type or types that it has, as well as the sprite. So, I mean, we can just keep clicking this as many times as we want, and you'll see that it's gonna load a random Pokemon from the internet every single time. Now, this is just kind of a silly and fun little project, but the main concepts are gonna apply to most standard APIs. So now here's the Pokey API website, and it's just pokeyapi.co, and it gives you this little tool where you can try it out. So essentially what I have is if you do um, Pokemon slash 151, of course, that's going to return all the stuff for the Pokemon on Mew. And you'll see that this is the JSON that it's returning. And it's actually quite a big JSON file. If you go into here, it shows you like kind of all the moves that this Pokemon can use. And it just goes really deep. As you see at the bottom here, it's uh, over 22,000 lines of JSON. And so that's kind of a lot of data for us to parse through. So in today's example, I'm going to be showing you how we can get just a few basic things from this JSON, such as the name of the Pokemon, the type or types that this Pokemon is, as well as the sprite of the Pokemon. This is all going to be based off of just the ID here. So in essence, what happens when we click on the random Pokemon button, it's going to generate a random number. And that number is going to correspond to the IDs of one of the Pokemon. Then it's going to call our API, which is going to return a big old JSON file. And we're going to be able to parse through that JSON file to get the name, the types of the Pokemon, as well as the sprites. Now the sprites themselves aren't actually stored in the JSON file. It's just a URL to them. And then so I'm going to be showing you how we can go to that URL, get the sprites from them, uh, download those and show those in our project. So that's just a brief overview of what I'm going to be showing you how to do in today's video. Of course, links to the project files as well as the time codes for this video are going to be down in the description right below the like and subscribe buttons. And also I'm planning on making some more videos about integrating APIs into Unity, such as doing user authentication, as well as put requests. But if there's anything else you would like to learn or some specific APIs that you might like me to use, uh, feel free to leave all that down in the comment section below. Anyways, let me just give you a quick rundown of how I have my Unity project set up. Pretty much, I just have all these UI elements sitting on a canvas here. Of course, I have the background image. Then I have a raw image component, which is where we're going to be putting the sprite textures of our Pokemon on. And then after that, I have text mesh pro objects for uh, the Pokemon's name, their number, as well as the two possible types that it can have. And then lastly, I just have this random Pokemon button here. So that's pretty much all the UI. And then I just have this basic Pokemon web requester object, which all it has is this Poke API controller script, which is the one script that I'm maybe showing you how to create today. However, there is one other script that you actually need to download from the internet and put into a, a folder called plugins. And that's just going to be this simple JSON script, which is available on the uh, Unity 3 3D wiki. Of course, I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well as include it with the project files featured in this video. But basically, this is just going to allow us to do some simple JSON operations so we can get the data we need from that large JSON file that we're getting from the uh, Pokey API website. So anyways, here's our Pokey API controller C sharp script, we are going to need to uh, include a couple more namespaces. So we're going to need to use the unity engine.networking. So this is going to be allow us to use the unity web request class. We we'll also need to include the simple JSON namespace and Remember, we can only include that if we do have this simple json.cs script sitting in our plugins folder. And then lastly, if you do want to put this out to Unity UI elements, just go ahead and include the Unity Engine.ui as well as TM Pro if you're using Text Mesh Pro. So here I just have a couple public UI variables, a raw image for the Pokemon raw image, Text Mesh Pro UGUI for the name and the number of the Pokemon as well as an array, which is going to refer to the two types of the Pokemon. So going back to our scene, we just have the raw image, Pokemon name, Pokemon number, 
as well as the types associated with the Pokemon. And we'll just be sure to drag those all into our Poke API controller script once it's on our Pokemon web requester object. So next I have a private read-only string for the base Poke URL. And so that basically just refers to this base URL here that's listed on the Poke API website here. So just copy paste that over. So here in the start function, we're basically just gonna blank out all our UI. So of course, we're just gonna set the raw image texture uh, to just a black texture, which will just go ahead and blank it out essentially. And then all the UI text objects, we're just gonna blank those out. So you see, we just start with some placeholder stuff here. And then when we press the play button, this raw image in the middle is gonna blank out as well as all the text off to the side. So now we're gonna go ahead and configure what happens when we press the random Pokemon button. So I just have this public void function called on button random Pokemon. So the first thing it does is it's gonna generate a random Poke index, which is going to be a random number between one and 807, because this database goes all the way up to Pokemon number 807. One thing to keep in mind that the random.range function, when we're using it for integers, the minimum number is inclusive, while the maximum number is exclusive. So if we want to do between 1 and 807, we actually pass in the values of 1 and 808. Now here we're just going to set up some of our UI elements. So when we're loading a new Pokemon, again, we're just going to go ahead and blank out that raw image. And then we're going to set the Poke named text dot text to loading dot dot dot. And then we're just going to pass in the number of the random Poke index. So basically what happens when I click random Pokemon for a second, it just shows loading as the Pokemon's name, and then it displays the number. Then when it actually downloads everything from the web, it will populate the name types as well as the sprite. So once we have our UI all set how we like, we're just going to go ahead and start the coroutine called get Pokemon at index, and we'll just pass in our random Poke index. So here we have this coroutine, which we're going to declare by declaring an I enumerator, get Pokemon at index, which takes in uh, an integer for the Pokemon index. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just get the Pokemon info. So this is uh, that whole big 22,000 line long JSON string. So to do that, we're going to generate a Pokemon URL, which is the base Poke URL plus Pokemon slash Pokemon index dot two string. And so this just gives us this URL here. So you see that we have just kind of the base URL here plus Pokemon slash and then the index. So going back to the Pokemon API, you'll see that this is the full URL that we're gonna be putting in. Now here is where we're going to create a new Unity web request. We'll just call it Poke info request. So we'll set that equal to web request dot get Pokemon URL. And we're doing a dot get because we're trying to get some of that JSON information from this URL. So now all we do is do a yield return Poke info request dot send web request. So this is basically going to send that web request out to uh, this URL. And then once it actually returns that JSON information to us, then we can return to this I enumerator here. So once we return to the coroutine, we're gonna check if the Pokey info request has a network error or an HTTP error. If it does, we'll just log that error to the debug console and we'll do a yield break to uh, break out of the coroutine because we don't wanna continue anymore. However, if there's no errors, we can just go ahead and continue and we can start parsing through our JSON. So we'll do a new JSON node called Pokey info and we'll set that equal to json.parse passing in Pokey info request dot download handler dot text. So this is gonna be that full text string of JSON that's returned from this URL here. And don't forget that the JSON node as well as this JSON.parse, that's all included uh, in that simple JSON script. So you really wanna make sure that you have all that. So now here's where we can actually get some info from this large JSON file. So we'll do a new string for the Pokey name. So this is going to be the name of the Pokemon. And all we're gonna do is do uh, Pokey info, which is the name of kind of our JSON node object. And within the square brackets, we'll just pass in the string name. So you see that when we go back to the Pokey API website, and this is where all the JSON is printed out, um, you'll see that we have this tag called name, and it's going to have the value of mu. And so this is just basically kind of at like the base level of our JSON. Uh, so it's not nested under anything like that. So that's how we can access it just by passing in the name value here. Now, when we get the URL for the Pokemon Sprite, this is going to be a nested JSON object. Uh, so we'll set this equal to Pokey info, passing in sprites, 
And then we're gonna do another square brackets here doing front underscore default. So again, let me just show you that off here. If we expand this sprites category here, you'll see that there is a front default one here. And then there's gonna give us this uh, URL here and we can actually go to this URL and it's gonna show you just this small little sprite of the uh, Pokemon Mew. Now for Pokemon types, it gets a little bit more complicated because some Pokemon only have one type where others have two. So we don't always know how many types a Pokemon has. The way we're gonna handle this is we're actually gonna create a new JSON node called Pokytypes and we'll set that equal to Poke info at the value of types. So for the Mew example, you'll see that this Pokemon only has one type, which is Psychic. However, if we go to another Pokemon, such as Gyarados, you'll see that types, this has two items. So it's flying and water. One thing that's kind of interesting about just how this is printed out is the first element is its secondary type, well as the second element is its primary type. So we just need to keep that in mind that these are actually backwards, and I'll be showing you how we deal with that here right now. So once we have that new JSON node set to that types root node, we're gonna create a string array called Pokey type names, and we'll set this equal to a new string array of size pokeytypes.count. So basically this is just going to be a single element string array if it has one type or a two element string array if that Pokemon has two types. Now we're going to do a for loop and we're gonna start I at zero and we're gonna set J equal to pokeytypes.count minus one. So basically I is starting from the beginning and J is starting from the end. And we're going to loop while I is less than pokeytypes.count and each time we're going to increment I by one and decrement J by one. So essentially what we're gonna do is set the type names at position J, so at the end, is equal to pokey types at position I, and then we're gonna look for the type and name. So under types, you'll see that for this Pokemon, we have two different types. So there's a, a, the zero element and the one element. And under each of these, if we expand these, you'll see that there's a, a, a type key, and then under that, we have the name key. And so all we want is this name key here for this one, as well as this one. So the way we access that is just by doing pokey types at position I, so that's either zero or one. And then again, we're looking for the type and the name. So now here, we're actually going to get the Pokemon Sprite. As I mentioned before, the sprites aren't necessarily stored in the JSON file, uh, just the URL to them is. We did get the URL uh, from the initial JSON file here. However, in order to actually get it, we're gonna need to create another Unity web request. We'll call this one Pokey Sprite Request. So we'll set that equal to, uh, this is gonna be a little bit different. It's going to be a Unity web request texture dot get texture and then we'll pass in the pokey sprite url and same as before we'll just do a yield return pokey sprite request dot send web request and then so once we got the image from the web we'll return to this coroutine and then we'll just check again if the pokey sprite request has any network errors or http errors if it does we'll just log that error to the debug console and just break out of the i enumerator otherwise if that's all good we can just go ahead and start setting up the ui objects so first we'll set the Pokey raw image dot texture. We'll set that equal to download handler texture dot get content passing in the pokey sprite request. So this is what actually sets that raw image to the image that we're downloading from the internet. And then one thing that I'm doing for this example is just setting uh, the pokey raw image textures filter mode to filter mode dot point. This is because these sprites are pixel art and I don't want to apply any sort of any aliasing or anything like that. So basically the filter mode dot point just applies no filtering to it. And that's how we get those nice crisp solid pixels on the sprites here. And then here's where we actually set the Pokemon's name as well as any applicable types. Of course, I just created this simple uh, capitalized first letter and you can see how that works there. Just so everything looks a little bit nicer because when we do get it from the raw JSON, the first letter is set to lowercase. So just remember to save all your scripts and then on your random Pokemon button, you're gonna wanna add this on click property and then drag in your Pokemon web requester object. Under here, you're going to select the Poke API controller and then do the on button random Pokemon function. So once we have that all set, we can just go ahead and hit play again. It's gonna load up, of course, it's gonna blank everything out and we can do random Pokemon. It's gonna load Pokemon number one which is Bulbasaur, of course, who has a primary type of grass and a secondary type of poison. 
of course we can just keep hitting this random Pokemon and it's gonna give us, um, you know, all sorts of Pokemon throughout the wide world of Pokemon. And so here's Blastoise, and I think that's an excellent Pokemon to end on. So I really do hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave it a like. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on game development. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. And again, if you would like to download all the project files featured in this video, you can do that down in the description below as well. But hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.